This is not going well. It looks like throw up. <laughs> my channel Christmas edition I am a very very big Christmas person so much in fact that at midnight on Halloween I kid you not I turn on my Christmas music like it's just my favorite time of year I get really, really excited about it and I just love it and yeah as you can tell I'm in rare form today for the Christmas spirit but anyway today I'm gonna be doing red velvet swirl brownies without further ado let's go ahead and get into it so we're gonna start off by putting a half cup of melted butter a cup of sugar. It's said to be to add these in one at a time and mix in between each thing that you're adding. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add in a teaspoon of vanilla and you're gonna add in a fourth cup of cocoa. Mix that together. It said a pinch of salt. I did like a fourth teaspoon. And I'm gonna add in a tablespoon of red dye. Look like the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Mix that in there. Slowly, because I don't want to splash none of this on my new apron for Christmas. You feel me? Oh! I just remembered I forgot to preheat the oven. Let me do that. Add in a teaspoon of vinegar. Add in two eggs. Ooh, now it's looking really red. Now I'm going to take my three-fourths cup of flour, and it says to fold it in. So I'm going to just shimmy it on in here like that. I'm just gonna take my rubber spatula, fold it in. Okay, that's all done, the flour is in there, and it's a little bit more thick. So now I'm gonna go ahead and push this to the side, and we're gonna work on the cream cheese layer. So I'm gonna take a fourth cup of sugar and eight ounces of cream cheese, which has been sitting out and is now room temperature. Plop it on in there, oh God. I'm gonna combine these two together and kind of cream them first. Add in the egg. And a smidgen of vanilla. It says an eighth teaspoon, so I'm gonna just do like a little shh. Bitty fat. That'll be fine. There's still some more chunks of cream cheese in there. There's nothing worse than having something that's cream cheese and like you get a bite of it and there's actual chunks of unsweetened, unflavored cream cheese in there. And it's just like, ah! So, I'm gonna beat for a little bit longer. Okay, I think that's better. The recipe also says that you need to take out three tablespoons of the red velvet batter and put it to the side so that you can do the swirling decoration on top. So I ended up doing like six and a half, which is about a half a cup, so. All right, now I got my little square pan and I'm... It's an eight by eight square pan. I'm gonna grease it with a little pan ease. It's literally called pan ease, but when I was little, I used to be like, yeah, I'm gonna get some panties. <laughs> so childish. I'm gonna take some of this, which is basically just oil and flour and something else that I don't know, cause I didn't make it. But basically this just acts as uh, something to grease your pan with. Then I'm going to pour my batter into El Pan O. I like to use one of these offset spatulas to smooth out my batters and such, just to make it a nice, even layer. Then I'm gonna take the cream cheese layer and pour that right on top of it. Do the same thing. Next thing I'm gonna do is just take a spoon and just do dollops of the red velvet dough, or not dough, <laughs> batter. From here, you take a knife and you just kind of swirl through. And you wanna try not to go all the way down to the bottom of there. Just try to keep it surface level. Now I'm just gonna kind of like do this because I think that's cute. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in the oven and when it comes out, it's going down. Basement. Um, I don't know any other lyrics than that, so. I'm gonna put this in. So because the brownie is going to end up baking for 30 minutes and that's a lot of time to not really be doing nothing, we're going to do a very special episode. 
where I make a little bit of uh, a, a little side accent to to the dessert that I'm currently making. I'm gonna make some eggnog now. This is a very holiday specific type thing. Uh, I don't think I, I may have had eggnog like once or twice in my life, but um. I'm not sure I'm gonna like it. I'm kind of nervous. Yeah, where does eggnog even come from? Hold on, let me check. Eggnog comes. While culinary historians debate its exact lineage, most agree eggnog originated from the early medieval Britain. By the 13th century, monks were known to drink a posset with eggs and figs. Sounds great, doesn't it? Mm. So, I'm gonna try to make my own today. Alcoholic free, because I don't really drink like that. Um, I did not prepare for this, so none of my stuff was pre-measured out. So to start off, I need three egg yolks. Don't roll away, bruh. I ain't down for that. I used to do the whole like toss in between the shells thing like this, but I feel like that's a lot more risky and you're more susceptible to break the yolks that way. So these days I just do this. I just kind of hold it in my hand and yank out all the yolk. But I can save those and use them for something else. A half cup of sugar. Whisk that together. And get out another saucepan. So I just realized I messed up because I was gonna half in the recipe, which is why I did three egg yolks, but I did a half cup of sugar and if I wanted to half in it, I should have done a fourth cup of sugar. So now I'm going to have to double the recipe and make way more eggnog than I wanted to. So bring it back, get three more eggs, Dang it, you done effed up, A.A. Ron. Oh no! Oh gosh, okay. My egg yolk broke. It's fine, everything is fine. Every Everything's fine! Oh, Lord, what is, what am I doing? Oh my gosh, okay, let me, okay, okay. Gonna be okay. There. Mix in those. A cup of heavy whipping cream. Throw that in the saucepan. <laughs> Sounds like tinkle. Two cups of milk. It says whole milk, but we don't have whole milk, and I'm not following directions once again. So I'm gonna give you two cups of 2% milk. Throw it in the pot. Half teaspoon of nutmeg. And I'm also gonna put in a little bit of cinnamon because I am winging it. And like I said, I'm also gonna do a snitch of cinnamon. I don't know what that'll do with the flavors, but I done messed up everything else. I might as well just get wild with it. And then a pinch of salt. I'm gonna do about that much, which is definitely more than a pinch, probably about an eighth teaspoon, but I don't care anymore. Give that a little whiskey whiskey. And then I'm going to put it on the stove and it says warm it just until it barely simmers. And then we'll come back and deal with this little egg mixture thing too. I have my hot milk mixture and my egg mixture. I'm gonna take a spoonful of this at a time, pour it in and whisk. You wanna temper the egg. If I were to just pour this egg mixture into this hot milk mixture, it would instantly cook the egg in this and make like little pieces of scrambled egg, which is disgusting. By pouring in a spoonful at a time, and whisking it together. Pour this back in here. I'm gonna take this, put it back on the stove, let it finish cooking for a while. I don't know how long. It says just until it thickens. And then put the vanilla in it and let it start chilling. And then hopefully by then the brines will be done. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I did something wrong. <laughs> oh golly. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is not how it's supposed to be. It was fine. It was literally fine, and then I don't know what happened. So we're gonna keep going forward anyway. Do a little bit of vanilla, and it is so clumpy. I don't know what happened. Hold on, I don't think this is gonna work very well. Let me think of something else. Uh, I need a funnel. You know, don't try to be cute. I'm gonna just, we're gonna use this big old cup. In order to try to salvage this, I'm gonna need to strain out the clumps. Hopefully I don't burn myself trying to do this. Oh my lord Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. 
Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even gonna finish this. You know what? I need something else. Let me get another bowl. Hold on. As I pour, oh, okay. As I pour, I'm gonna unload all the nasties into that bowl. It looks like throw up. This is, this is foul. This is bad. I don't know what happened. It was literally just fine. You know, I think I cooked it just a smidge too long. Just too long, because it said just until it thickens, and it got thick, and then I started to see a bubble on the sides, and I was like, oh, let me stop this. I don't got some in my face. I, 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 I and this is what I have left. Let me put this in a clear cup so you can see. Out of all that milk and all that heavy cream, this is how much eggnog I got out after straining it out the clumps. I'm gonna try it. I'm so scared to try this. It's gonna be nasty. I just feel it. I'm gonna put this away so we can try the brownies. Okay, so the brownies are done. And they make up for the ugliness of the eggnog, don't you think? This is a gorgeous little design. So let me get a plate. This is so pretty. Like, look at that from the side angle. Isn't that gorgeous? And I'm not even concerned about this. I already know this is gonna be good. My eggnog, that is probably going to be nasty. But this, I'm very confident will be good. Okay. <laughs> the texture of the cream cheese mixture kind of threw me off at first because it's kind of like uh, a little foamy might be the word but it's good it's kind of like if you've ever had meringue on top of a pie it's kind of that texture I've never really been a huge red velvet fan because I like chocolate and when I want something chocolate I want something chocolate I don't want something with this much chocolate in it that's kind of chocolatey but kind of not. Shout out to whoever decided, yeah, I'm gonna put like a tablespoon of chocolate in something called red velvet and make millions of people think that red velvet is a flavor. And shout out to all those people who said that they don't like chocolate but they like red velvet. Ha, stupid. Red velvet is chocolate. I poured my eggnog into a different cup, hoping that the festive look of the cup will help it taste better. Um, and it is still warm. So I'm gonna put a little bit of ice in here to hope to cool it off. I'm so scared. It still has chunks in it. Like, look, this is the cup. There's still chunks there. I don't wanna do this. I'm just swirl it around a little bit. There's chunks sticking through the ice. One, two, three, go. You know what? So the flavor is not bad, but there's chunks everywhere. So I can't do it. It's just like spiced milk, kind of. It's like nutmeg milk. So I don't really see the appeal but it's probably better when it doesn't have little chunks of cooked egg and milk in it too, I would assume. So, yeah, I'm not gonna drink any more. Call me a quitter, I don't care. I'm not here to prove anything to anyone. I'm just here to be entertainment. <laughs> I mean, let me know if you've tried eggnog before and you've, you've tried to make it, I should say. A lot of people have tried eggnog. You tried to make it and it turned out better than mine did because mine is chunky, so. I hope you have a very, very good Christmas. Like, comment, subscribe, share on your Facebook pages, Instagram, tell your mama, tell your kids, tell your aunties, and stay jolly for this Christmas season, you dig? Bye. <laughs>